Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief at theserverside.com. You can follow me on Twitter, CameronMCNZ. And I wanted to talk to you about how to use the get row item function in UiPath Studio. So in this example, I'd like to greatly simplify my for each row example that I used before by actually using some of the tools in UiPath to pull data from a row of a data table out for me. So in order to do that, I'm going to go and start a new process. I'm going to call it the row item process, the row item project. Click create and when the creation of the project is finished, I'm going to open up the main workflow and I'm going to read a CSV file. I always like to start off by reading a CSV file that I use over and over again. I have to create it in this row item folder. This is the root of the project. So I'm going to do that. There's the root of the project right there. I'm going to create a new text file called inputfile.csv. And inside that CSV file, I'm just going to put uh, a name of some of my favorite talk radio show hosts. So there we go right there. Click Save. And as you can see, we've got the first name and last name column. It's the last name column that I'm interested in. And I'd like to go through this list of names one at a time and just put in a message box, Moore, Stafford, Corin, Oakley, Wilner, Toronto, Tory. And so there we go. That's saved. Now when I go back to UiPath, you notice that that file is available there. And so that's the way that we're going to start off this application. We're going to read in from that input file CSV file. Now that's going to be stored in a temporary variable. That means I've got to create a temporary variable. And that temporary variable is going to be called input because that's the input file. And it's not a type string. It represents a, a data table, right? And we're pulling in a CSV table file. So we have to make the object of type data table. So there we go. So now that's pulled in the um, that's now pulled in the input file CSV. It's processed it, and now say output two and say input. And basically, what this output two means is, after reading in this file, we're going to store it in a variable named, in this case, input. Okay, so that's fantastic. Now, what's next? The next thing we want to do is we want to loop through all of the different elements in that data table, everything, each element, each row in that CSV file. So that means using a for each loop. So I have the for each loop on here. And you can see we're going to loop through each row and each row in what? Well, in that input data table that we've got right up there. Right? So we're going to go through each row that we've loaded in from the input file CSV and then we're going to do something. Now what are we going to do? Well one row at a time we're going to pull out the last name. And so that's where this uh, option to do uh, go in to the data table and pull out an individual row comes in. And there's get row item right there. So each time we go in here, we're going to get a row item. And now what row item are we going to get? Uh, well, let's see. We have to go over here to this window that says, okay, what is the actual row object that we're going through? And it's the row object to find up here with the name row. So that's pretty easy. Um, what's the column name that we're after? So I'm after the last name. And then there's also this output value. Oh, look at this last name. It's got to be in quotes because it's not a variable. Row is a variable, you can see right there, but uh, the field last name is not, so that has to be in double quotes. The last name comes right there inside the CSV file. And then we want to output that to a temporary variable, and so that means I'm going to have to create another temporary variable here. I'm going to call that output, and it's just going to be a type string, because we're just pulling in you know, one string at a time here. And so now we've gone through each element in the row. Each time we go through an element, we pull out an element, uh, specifically the last name field, and we hold it in a variable named output. Okay, I'm going to put that in there. Almost forgot. Right, that's our variable output of type string that is hold, temporarily holds the value in the row for the last name. And then right here in the body, what do we want to do? Well, in this case, I'm just going to display the last name in a text field. So. I just go to dialog, select message box, drop that message box there, and what do we want? Well, we just want to display whatever that variable output is, right? That's the variable that we just declared here. And so the basic logic is pull in that CSV file that has first names and last names in it. Go through that CSV file one row at a time. Then for each individual row, get the last name and store that last name in a variable named output and then display the output in a message box. So I'm going to save that. Click Save, Control-S, then I'm going to run the file. 
and then you can see when it runs the first thing that comes up is more the second thing that comes up is Stafford the third thing that comes up is Corin the fourth thing that comes up is Bullard the fifth things that come up is my favorite John Oakley and I think you get the idea all of the different ones then come up and then finally it runs but there you go that's how the get row item works in the previous example I actually used some uh, VB script in there to kind of access that element by uh, using some code this is a little bit easier way to do that and there you go that's how you use the get row item element in UiPath studio if you enjoyed that tutorial head over to the server side.com I've got lots of other great tutorials and articles on enterprise software development if you're interested in my personal antics follow me on Twitter at Cameron MCNZ and subscribe on YouTube